All right, so this week was the finals of the Zwift Academy and they announced who won the Zwift Academy. Now, I'm gonna go through people who won it before, how good they got, and also the selection process. Is it actually like good or is it just sort of pointless um, and doesn't really find diverse talent? Um, so anyway, we'll, we can go through the women's first, but I don't think I have too many much criticism. Like if we look at um, the first one, it was like Leia Thorfinson, like she used to run, she's still in the sport, pretty good. Um, again, uh, Tanya Arath, she's still racing Conti as well, um, pretty good. And like generally, like a lot of the women haven't come necessarily from like a continental level of cycling. Um, a lot of them have come from different sports um, and generally they have actually integrated quite well into the team. Um, and like Nia Bradbury is definitely like probably one of the strongest people who've been around. But when you go through the men's, because I think it's a bit more interesting. So first of all, Ollie Jones, um, he was the first one to win it. So before like two years ago, uh, sorry, last year, they just went to the Dimension Data under 23 team, which was a bit like meh. Um, but anyway, uh, if we look at Ollie Jones, like pretty strong boy for sure. But like my point is, is that, okay, like he got to race for them, but then I guess after that hasn't kicked on. But I think the bigger thing is like, um, has raced UCI results before, is Zwift Academy just trying to find Conti people and then find them a new Conti team? Because that's what it seems like to me. And I was like, is that a waste of time? Um, so I think maybe I should go back to like origins. Zwift Academy was like, we're gonna find people who like, you know, have been left behind and all the rest of it. And you were like, okay, fair enough. They're gonna find these people in their basements whacking seven months per kilo for 20, but like can barely ride in a bunch and get them to be stupid. And I was like, that sounds sick, but like, Ollie Jones, okay, fair enough, has raced UCI races, done Nation Cup races, signed in 2018 for Dimension Data, like average year, um, but nothing crazy. And then next year it doesn't sign through, so you're like, okay, slightly pointless. We then go to Martin Laverich. So he was like Slovenian boy. So 2017 race for Team Gusto, which is like a quite a big Conti team in Slovenia. Um, 2018, he didn't, like, he wasn't racing Conti team, but you can still see he's done an outrageous amount of UCI races and then hasn't got results. So I don't really know why Zwift Academy have picked him up and been like, well, we know his number is outraged. It's like, well, yeah, but everyone knows his number is outraged. That's why he's on a Conti team. That's why he's doing UCI races. And then they sign him. And it's like, well, okay, cool. But like, I don't really get it. Like, I thought the point was to get people who haven't done big races, but have a really big talent, not to just find a Conti team, a Conti boy, pick them in a new Conti team and expect they're gonna do better than they currently do it. Cause they haven't. So I don't really get it so far. So again, the first two, not great. Drew Christensen, again, so he's at least had two years. He did actually go up to the, well, um, well he went to the top Conti team for a second year. But again, 2019, has done UCI races. You're like, okay, fair enough. Like, didn't have a huge exposure. So you're like, maybe that's justified. And like, to be fair, 32nd in junior world champs is pretty strong. Uh, and then moves on to like a Conti team. Again, you can't really be too critical. Like, it is what it is. He obviously had really good numbers, but... I don't know, DNS, DNF, a lot of DNFs and a lot of DNSs. So like, again, they signed him again for 2021. Obviously 2020 was a bit of a rubbish year. Um, again, like decent results. Um, but if you look at the trend, okay, apart from Martin Laverick, like everyone's from the Southern Hemisphere. Then we have Jay Vine, um, who again, like has been a Conti boy, obviously 2019, he was racing UCR races. 2020, um, he raced for Nero as well. Um, I think with him, obviously he's been an outrageous success. Uh, again, like that, that's good. So they found someone. Um, again, I guess the point is, is like, is it someone new? Not really. Um, and I guess in a normal year, maybe in Australia, he would have got the results anyway. But still, like, you can't really say anything about Jay Vine. He's done outrageously well and is a really strong lad. And I guess this is where maybe it's been useful because they've actually managed to pinch someone um, who was like racing in Australia and had minimal exposure due to Corona and then actually shown that he can compete in the World Tour. Uh, but again, like it, it's not like they're finding anyone like who can't hasn't raced in a bunch. And maybe I'm asking for too much, but it seems like that was what people thought at the beginning, at least. And on some of the women's riders, riders they have. Again, then we have Alex Bonnier, and I feel like this boy could be the one. Like you know, obviously he's races for a Conti team already, so he's obviously good. But like, and I assume he has good results in the NRS, but that's not, those aren't UCI races, so hard to tell. UCI wise, he's only got one result. 35th and men's under 23 obviously still got a couple years of under 23 left but yeah maybe this this will be the year in which and like an actual unknown like person becomes really really good 
because this time it's not they're getting signed to another like under 23 development team they're actually start getting signed to a pro conti team and then, let's be honest they're basically world tour um so yeah it'll be interesting but what's your thoughts like is Swift academy maybe on the men's side just a bit like finding conti people and getting them into spots anyway and it's not really as revolutionary you think or do you think i'm asking for too much you can't actually just get random people from the basement so you can do seven watts per kilo turn them up into a pro conti team and expect them to get get results probably not uh, but i do think it would be interesting like definitely um if it was just less conti people i remember like two years ago when jay vine won it's like jay vine and then ollie moores i think it was who raced for ribble and damon clayton who raced for canyon and you were like well i don't want to be rude but they've all had their opportunities in cycling like they're all at conti level so you're like they can't make it then like i don't know why just because they've got really good numbers they'll suddenly be able to make it there it's like they're already racing at the level i think what's more interesting is when you get people who haven't raced at that level but have the potential to do it then to see, which is why I think Alex Bonny will actually be quite exciting to see, can he do it? Um, and is Zwift actually a really good scouting tool? Because you then come to the conclusion that if it was a really good scouting tool, other people would use it, but they don't. And the reason is because people who can get really good results, um, so have really good numbers, but can't get results, no one wants to sign. Otherwise, they'd elaborate, we get signed for doing seven months per kilo for 20 minutes. And I think that's the key point is that like, if you're just gonna get people like Martin Average, for instance, like no, no hate on any of these people, but it's just the facts. Like, you know, he's getting decent results, um but like nothing crazy but like just signing him to a new team isn't going to change that like fundamentally um but i think what it would what will be interesting as i said before Alex bonya no ucr results zero but obviously really really strong um so will he be able to turn it around and actually get results i hope so it'll be a pretty sick story um but yeah anyway leave me your thoughts below and i'll see you in the next one